but it was such a pain and just this hole in my heart and it was a real quiet Christmas. A reunion three years in the making why a mother and her daughter are holding on to an old Christmas promise. And I'm thinking, oh hell, somebody broke in my house. So then I come inside and there the guy is standing there with my TV. A thief caught red-handed. Hear from a Lexington man who says he came home to a man trying to rob him. Fans across Lexington were excited to watch Kentucky beat their in-state rival and remain undefeated. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. I'm Kristen Kennedy. We'll have those highlights for you in just a minute. We begin tonight with two breaking news alerts out of Lexington. The first, a man is recovering from two gunshot wounds. You are taking a live look right now at Roosevelt Street. We're told someone shot a man in the back and then the arm. They found the victim on Lindbergh Drive. Keep checking WKYT.com for the latest updates on that scene. Also breaking tonight, police in Madison County are on the scene of a crash on Interstate 75 near the Fayette County line. State police tell us they had to shut down the interstate after two cars crashed. We're told the wreck happened around 940 and one of the cars caught fire. Police say multiple people had to go to UK with serious injuries. Traffic is being diverted to exit 95. Again, keep checking WKYT.com for updates. The two top Kentucky teams that have been battling on the court for decades met again this afternoon. Number one ranked Kentucky took on number four ranked U of L. WKYT's Lee K. Howard is here with highlights from the game. How about that game? It was a battle between two of the top teams in college basketball. Wildcats traveling to Louisville for their first road test of the season, and you can bet no love lost between these two programs. Louisville's only lead of the game, in fact, came at the eight minute mark in the first half. Harry Rozier knocks down the 10 footer. It was 13 to 12 cards. But the Cats answer quickly. Aaron Harrison finds himself alone on that left side, gets his first shot to fall. UK retakes the lead. Kentucky led 22 18 at the break. Here comes the second half, and on the inbounds pass, Willie Colley Stein battled foul trouble all day, but gets the steal and the dunk there on the other end, 24 18. Then off the turnover, Towns drives and delivers, plus the foul. Carl Anthony Towns makes it 28 24. All four Kentucky freshmen played big in this game, but no one had a bigger game than the little man. Tyler Eulis on the kick out, buries the three from the top of the circle. Eulis had a team high 14 points. Louisville though not going away. Chris Jones when he wasn't flopping he was hitting threes. The lead cut to eight. Just over a minute to play. The Cats need a big shot. Who else? Aaron. Big shot. Harrison knocks down that left elbow jumper. We've seen him do it plenty of times before. Wildcats win it 58 to 50. A big game for several players and now that 40 and 0 talk starts to ramp up once again. We'll hear from the Cats about that coming up a little bit later. Back here in Lexington, many fans who bleed blue watch the Cats on TV cheering from afar. Thousands of fans packed bars and restaurants to watch the big game. WKYT's Victor Puente visited one bar near the University of Kentucky to talk to some members of the Big Blue Nation. A lot of fans in Lexington who couldn't make it to Louisville still made it out of their homes, filling up restaurants and bars to see UK get their 13th straight victory. It was a brewery full of excited UK fans in Chair Avenue tonight. Awesome game. We're here for holidays and just decided to stop into our old watering hole. Absolutely love it. Go Cats. Go Cats. I'm so excited to see what this team does. And despite Coach Cal's warning at the beginning of the season, the talk of the team going undefeated during the church, one fan thinks it's a very likely scenario. I love it. I mean, I, if we don't win the title, it's going to be a disappointment, I think. So. I know it's high expectations, but it, it is what it is. I asked one of those fans about UK entering conference play. He laughed and said he felt a little sorry for the SEC. Then he said, well, not too sorry. A lot of those fans excited to see those games begin. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. UK fans who made the trip to Louisville and back had a pretty wet ride. We've seen a lot of rain across central Kentucky today, and 
WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell says we'll see more. Yeah, we'll likely see even more through the overnight and especially into your Sunday. It's a little on the misty side here in Lexington right now. We're not seeing a full blown shower, but as you look outside, normally we could see all the way back toward the downtown area. And due to the lower visibility and some of that mist out there, we're not. And of course, you can see it, some of the lights, how they're affecting the uh, rain that's on the lens as well, getting that little effect there. 46 degrees right now in Lexington, and there you see visibility now down to three miles, or feels like temperature comes in at 42. We'll watch temperatures continue to drop tonight and through the day tomorrow because we've got cold air just bottled up behind this area where you're seeing all of these showers. Some cold air coming our way. Let's track some of the showers that we have here across southern Kentucky, right around the Whitley City area, out toward Monticello there in Wayne County and Williamsburg, getting in on some of the rain as well here tonight. A little more out toward the east from Hazard to Hyden into Hindman there, not county, but not a big deal. We look at our daily breakdown. As we move ahead here, expect a soggy Sunday and temps start to really trend cooler and an even colder start to 2015. Highs around freezing. We'll take a closer look at that coming up for you here in just a few minutes. A third man wanted in connection with the Lexington murder is in jail tonight. University of Kentucky police arrested Aaron Smith this morning after he tried running during a traffic stop. We're told he faces charges in connection with the murder of 31 year old Walter Durrell Gray. Police say someone shot Gray back in November. Devin Jones and Terrico Williams are also charged with murder in connection to Gray's death. So far this year, there have been 18 murders in Lexington. State police say an argument between neighbors took a violent turn this morning in Russell County. Troopers say Jason Willis and his neighbor Trevor Robertson were arguing near a home on Highway 92. Robertson, we're told, then went to his home, grabbed a shotgun, and shot Willis. Robertson is charged with murder and is in the Russell County Detention Center. Police in Danville are searching for a man wanted in an armed robbery. Officers say the man walked into Check Advance on Perryville Road around 1 this afternoon, pulled down a gun, and demanded money. We're told an employee gave him some cash, and the man ran off. He's described as a biracial man, about 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 10, 200 pounds, with an average build. Tomorrow, a Kentucky family will say goodbye to their daughter. Visitation for Amber Cottle will begin at 9 at Hearn Funeral Home in Stanton. She died earlier this week. Police say someone fired shots Tuesday night during a home invasion in Winchester. One of the bullets went through the floor and killed her. Lamont Wilkerson is charged with murder. Police are still looking for another person of interest. Police say a Lexington driver put his three kids in danger when he crashed into another car. The man was driving down Wilson Downing Road around 11:30 this morning with his three children in the back seat. At one point, police say he reached into the back seat, drove across the center lane, and ended up crashing head-on with another car. One of the children went to the hospital to be checked out. The driver of the other car also went to the hospital with minor injuries. A homeowner in Lexington this morning says he caught a thief red-handed. The man pulled up to his home on Miller Street and noticed someone had kicked in his door. When he went inside, he says the burglar was standing there getting ready to leave with some of his things. And I'm thinking, oh, hell, somebody broke in my house. So then I come inside, and there the guy is standing there with my TV <clears throat> in his hands. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? The homeowner called police, and they arrested Terry Seawright. State police found a meth lab in a car in Laurel County. They were checking the car at a traffic checkpoint near the I-75 on-ramp just south of London. Troopers say the driver was intoxicated and had an unrelated arrest warrant. After searching the car, they found a one-step meth lab. Troopers arrested both the driver and a passenger. They have not released the name of those individuals. In southern Kentucky, a state lawmaker is preparing legislation that could close a city-owned gas station to the public. Senator Chris Girdler says Somerset City Hall intruded into the free market by going into the retail gas business. The proposal comes months after the retail gas station opened. Somerset Mayor Eddie Girdler says the proposal is an overreaction. He says feedback from customers has been overwhelmingly positive. Still to come on WKYT, a family comes full circle returning to the spot where they were supposed to meet three years ago. We'll tell you why a McDonald's is so special to a Moorhead mother and her child. 
Today, a Moorhead mother fulfilled a promise three years after making it. Noelle Hunter spent years trying to get her daughter, Muna, back after the girl's father kidnapped her and took her to West Africa. The day she left, Muna and her mother were headed out to get ice cream. She missed years of birthdays, holidays, and other special events. I was sitting in this big empty house missing her. We had up the tree, we had up all the little things that she had made in preschool, but it was such a pain and just this hole in my heart, and it was a real quiet Christmas. Today, the family finally went out for that ice cream date they never got to have. Muna returned home this past July.